Thank you very much, Randy. And let's go right back to our phone callers. Next up is Ann, listening in Kansas City, Missouri, on Bot Radio. Hi, Ann. Hi, Hank. Uh, my question is, uh, you you know you have published a lot of good resources, like um, will the real Islam stand up, and you know trying to equip Christians with the truth. And um, it seems like more and more Christians are being shamed or shut up if they try to speak the truth about Islam. And it's not that I'm fearful to talk about it or share the truth with my friends. I'm more frustrated, I guess, because I feel like this is a country where we should be able to talk, to say what we believe, and tell the truth. And um, it's just getting harder and harder to do that. Even our own government now is talking about anti-Muslim rhetoric. And what is your advice for Christians who are just trying to reasonably speak about Islam? Yeah, I mean, I think we ought to be able to speak the truth and to speak the truth in love. And quite frankly, when you have people like Obama and Clinton and Loretta Lynch and uh, a host of others like that uh, saying untrue things about Islam, which is to say they're misrepresenting Islam in its truest form. Uh, they're misrepresenting the Prophet Muhammad. They're uh, misrepresenting his teachings. They're misrepresenting the Quran. Most of them don't know the difference between a Meccan verse and a Medinan verse. They don't know the doctrine of abrogation, the fact that the peace-loving verses have been abrogated and the violent verses not. Uh, they don't even know how the Quran is organized from the surahs that are the longest to the shortest. Uh, so many people are very ignorant about Islam and they are pontificating from their platforms that this is a peaceful and tolerant religion. Uh, but if you look at the history of Islam, it does not point to Islam as either peaceful or tolerant. And that is not just as Islam has advanced by the sword through the centuries, but it is a clear indication of how Islam operates today. You go to Saudi Arabia and try to build a church or a synagogue and find out how peaceful and tolerant Islam is. Uh, Saudi Arabia has financed all kinds of mosques uh, throughout the Western world, but you cannot build a church uh, or preach the gospel on the streets of, uh, of Saudi Arabia um, and, or any of the cities within Saudi Arabia. Uh, so the, the, the notion that it is tolerant, it is not. It is not tolerant of anything other than their view. And if you try to proselytize or you convert from Islam to, uh, to Christianity, uh, with, with, within Saudi Arabia, you are going to be crucified or you're going to be beheaded or you're going to be stoned. Simple. All you have to do is look at the facts. So again, people are saying things uh, which simply are not true about, Saudi, uh, about, uh, about Islam. And, 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 and in me many cases, they're talking about a book they've never read. I was listening to Tony Blair the other day talking about how Islam is a peaceful and tolerant religion that shares the values that he shares. And I'm thinking, has he ever read the Quran? And while I'm thinking that, he says, and by the way, I love to read the Quran. Now, if he really reads the Quran and understands the Quran and understands the art and science of interpreting the Quran, um, then one has to question his sanity in saying that his values are the same as the values of uh, of Muhammad or the values that are uh, listed in the consensus, uh, the Hadith and the Quran. Yeah, yes, exactly. And uh, I find, especially on social media, it, it, these, you know, my friends, my coworkers, whoever I'm talking to, immediately just they shout me down. They they call me a racist or whatever, and I feel like I can't even speak about this. Sure, they've even invented a word, Islamophobe invented right. or coined a word uh, to silence you. But look, remember what Islam is overtly saying about Christianity. They are taking the heart out of Christianity. They're ripping it out, and no one seems to complain. Uh, they are saying that Jesus Christ was never crucified, and therefore Christ was never resurrected. If that is true, there's no Christianity. If that is true, Christ himself was a false messiah. 
uh, Jesus Christ claimed that he was God. They say to believe that is an unforgivable sin. Now, they're able to say that openly and freely, and we ought to be able to openly and freely communicate what we're communicating about Islam as a religion. And again, as I have underscored over and over again, this is not to say that there are not peace-loving and tolerant Muslims. What I am saying is Islam is a religion that has advanced by the sword, and now in places like Europe and the Western world, other places in the Western world, is advancing through migration without assimilation. Do you have just a quick word of advice for Christians who are trying to speak with their people and how to approach people without getting, without getting shut down or, you know, well, I don't think that you have to feel as though it is your responsibility to grab Muslims by the lapels and say, uh, you know, do you know about Jesus Christ? I think what your responsibility is to be an equipped Christian. And when you are, you'll have lots of opportunities. I've mentioned on the show that I'm right now in dialogue with a Muslim. And uh, I've gone to dinner with he and his wife, and we're having uh, very wonderful conversations um, I don't feel the necessity to convert him. That's the province of the Holy Spirit. But I am equipped to use the deviations of Islam as springboards for sharing the truth and love and grace that only Jesus Christ can bring to the human heart. I've also mentioned on this show that we had a Muslim live in our house for an entire year. He came to faith in Christ. I baptized him in a Christian church. Uh, by the way, he didn't want to go back to where he came from uh, originally because he was afraid for his life. But he lived in our home for a year and became uh, a very significant part of our family. Uh, also, I've spoken at the University of Tehran in Iran. I've spoken at Alama Tibetaba, the sociology university. I don't have a we they siege mentality against Muslims, uh, but I will speak the truth and I'm not going to be politically correct. <laughs> 